This is a short history of Allenton, one of the oldest and most beautiful neighborhoods in Virginia Beach, Virginia. In 1637, just 30 years after the first English settlers landed, King Charles I granted 500 acres in the then Lower Norfolk County to Henry Woodhouse, son of the former governor of Bermuda. The land was located on the west side of Broad Bay, the Narrows, and Lincoln Bay. In succeeding generations, the Woodhouse family would retain this land for the next 272 years. It was the 8th Henry Woodhouse, a father of 12 children, who in 1832, with slave labor, built the house that we now know as Old Comfort. It is a three-story house with two prominent side-by-side chimneys. It is considered one of the most historically significant structures in Virginia Beach. The Woodhouse family ownership of Old Comfort ended in December of 1909, when Arthur Sawyer Woodhouse and his wife Mary sold it and 175 acres to Norfolk contractor George Banks for $8,500. Here, we see some of Banks's construction crew renovating Old Comfort in 1909. He moved back to the city of Norfolk and sold the house and land to the Independent Land Company in 1913. In 1923, Frank McCullough purchased Old Comfort and the surrounding land. He moved his family into Old Comfort and began subdividing the land into building lots for homes and developing the area. He called the development Allenton, naming it after his son Allen. He put in a road to provide access to what is now called Mill Dam Road and named it after the property's original owners, the Woodhouses. Hundreds of cedar trees were planted along this road and today they form an overarching green gateway to the neighborhood. Mr. McAuliffe first sold several lots along the water's edge. The area was slow to develop because it was considered too far away from Norfolk. Most of the people just wanted to use the property to build a vacation or retreat spot. One of them was a two-story log home on the Big Island, McAuliffe Lane. The home was made of juniper logs from the Dismal Swamp and was shaped like a cross. Each arm of the cross had a bedroom and a bath. The area where the arms met was a large living and dining room combination. The fireplace was built with granite from the old Christ Church in Norfolk, which burned down in the early 1900s. Some say the house was originally used as a hunting lodge. Swedish immigrants Herman and Lydia Aspergren also bought some property on the Big Island in 1923. They called it Tom Tebow, which is Swedish for home of the elves or fairies. They owned a cottonseed oil manufacturing business that later became part of Procter & Gamble. He loved taking Swedish visitors to this property. His daughters hosted camping trips for sorority sisters. They camped out in a large tent, cooked over open fires, and waited in the shallows. A small cabin was built at Tom Tebow, but by the mid-1940s, the cabin had fallen into disrepair. In 1928, Dr. Robert Payne built a summer cabin on the Big Island. It was subsequently moved to the side of the property to make room for a permanent home. In 1925, Mary Lopez Evans, a wealthy woman from New York, visited her brother Joseph Lopez, who had a portable home in Allenton. She liked the area and decided she wanted a garden. She bought five acres along Lincoln Bay and hired a French brick mason to build a serpentine brick wall around it. It took three years for him to complete the wall and other structures on the property. Mrs. Evans had a wide variety of exotic shrubs and ornamental plants installed. It became her personal botanical garden. Known as Mary's Garden, it was quite the showplace where visitors strolled the grounds to admire the lush and unusual plantings. Although Mary's Garden has since been subdivided and several houses built, the wall, the water pump, and the conical brick pump house still exist today. Edith Lopez, a cousin of Mary and Joseph Lopez, also had a vacation cottage in Allenton and visited for months at a time. Local children were enthralled with her storytelling. She became known as Cousin Edith, and she was like a fairy godmother to the children. When she died in 1940, a trust fund was set up to have an acre lot on Cherry Lane become a playground for the children. It had a tennis court, playground equipment, and lattice summer house. But when the trust ran out of money, the property was sold off. The first permanent residents of Frank McAuliffe's new development were attorney Emmett Kyle and his wife Louisa Venable Kyle. 
they purchased two acres by Lankhorn Bay for $3,500, and in 1926, they built a house they called Edgewood. Mrs. Kyle wrote numerous articles in the Virginian Pilot as well as three books about the life in Allenton. The titles of the books are A Country Woman's Scrapbook, A Country Woman's Christmas, and Ram Lamb. The last one tells of her children's lamb. Mrs. Kyle also wrote The Witch of Pungo and other books and publications. She was even featured in the Southern Living Magazine. A street in Allenton is named for her, Venable Lane. Christmas caroling around a candlelit tree in the Kyle's Boxwood Garden became an Allenton tradition that lasted for six decades. In 1940, a number of Allenton residents got together to write and publish a booklet of poetry entitled Anthology of Allenton Verse. One of the poems, entitled Silhouette of Allenton, contains the lines, It is a happy place for grown-ups to live and a heaven for children and dogs. A book entitled King of Clubs tells the story of how J. Smith Faraby and his partner in Chicago bought a 296-acre plantation in Virginia in 1938. This farmland property turned out to be a major chunk of Allenton. They established the East Allenton Corporation and began selling lots. Ownership of the property became the prize in golfing bets between the two men that started the marathon golfing craze. The bulk of the plantation's remaining farmland was sold off to Frank Whitehurst. Whitehurst then formed the North Allenton Corporation in 1950 and commenced to develop lots for sale. The corporation set aside three areas for the exclusive recreational use and further development by North Allenton and East Allenton residents. They are the dock area near the end of Travis Parkway, the boat ramp at the north end of Allenton Drive, and another undeveloped property on North Allenton Drive. The West Allenton subdivision began in 1961. Development in the area continued as the Allenton Estates subdivision began in 1964. The open area adjacent to the entrance to Allenton came about because horse and buggies and farm-related wagons had trouble making such an acute turn from South Woodhouse Road onto Milldam. Frank McAuliffe purchased some of the property to facilitate a more gradual turn for these vehicles. Subsequently, the property was given to the Allenton Civic League. The Allenton Garden Club was formed in 1961. Its motto is, Our gardens tell what words can never speak so well. The club took responsibility for maintaining the property at the entrance. The serpentine wall, which mimics the one around Mary's Garden, was completed in 1963. Allenton Garden Club members also took it upon themselves to beautify the triangle at the intersection of South Woodhouse, Allenton, and Duke of Windsor Roads by planting a variety of shrubs and flowers. They also installed a custom cast cement bench in honor of Edna Gibbs, who had worked diligently over a number of years to beautify this small plot of land. The Baycliffe Development Corporation donated 5.4 acres to the Allenton Civic League for recreational use and the construction of a swimming pool. The donated property was a former borrow pit where sand had been excavated. Thus, the recreation center sits 35 feet lower than the surface of Stevens Road. The pool opened in 1970. Three years later, the Allenton Baycliffe Recreation Center Board of Directors acquired the adjoining 14.6 acres from a private citizen and the Allenton Civic League deeded over the title for the original 5.4 acres to the Recreation Center. Allenton is surrounded by three great schools. Allenton Elementary School opened in 1966 on what had been the eastern edge of the old Brown family farm, where soybeans had been grown. It was the first elementary school in Virginia Beach to have a gymnasium. At the rear of the school property is Mrs. Kyle's Grove. It was dedicated in her honor because she had so often visited the school to read stories to the children. In 2015, the track around the school's athletic field was dedicated to Dr. Joe Benson, who had served as the school's vice principal for several years. First Colonial High School also opened in 1966. It has a well-regarded academic record of achievement and a campus of 27.6 acres. The school sits on land purchased from Fannie Brock and was part of the old Brock farm. 
In 1970, Cape Henry Collegiate School opened its doors on the 30-acre property near the entrance to Allenton. This private school has grades from kindergarten through high school. The city of Virginia Beach has recognized it as the oldest accredited independent school in the city, with roots going back to the Everett School that opened in 1924 at a different location. As you enter Allenton, you are struck by the wonderful trees overarching the road, the large, well-manicured lawns, and the remarkable beauty of all the surrounding waterways. Many of the trees were planted about 90 years ago. The lawns are grown on fertile soil that used to be farmed, and the waterways look much the same as when Henry Woodhouse first came here. Allenton has been the home to many interesting figures, such as Frank Batten, whose company founded the Weather Channel, owned numerous newspapers, and who, along with his wife Jane, were great philanthropists. Rudy Bosch, the original Navy SEAL Team 2 member who became famous for being the oldest competitor on the Survivor TV series. Robert Stifler, the local gardening expert and columnist. Dorothy McDaniel, wife of P.O.W. Red McDaniel and co-founder of the National League of Families of Prisoners and Missing in Southeast Asia. Jacob Barton, a contemporary sound artist who created a new musical instrument called the Utterbot. Over the years, various articles in the Virginian Pilot captured the essence of Allenton in such headlines as Neighborhood Has Links to a King History is a Visible Part of the Allenton Landscape Allenton, Heaven by Lankhorn Bay Current residents, many of whom are children of former or current residents, just think it is a great place to live. We thank all who were so generous in providing information for this program. Special thanks to the Virginian Pilot for allowing us to use images and text from its newspapers.